the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution happy morning students and uh, i am so happy that every one of you have done your revision test of chapter 3 and 4 very successfully and uh, i am really happy because almost you have covered all the areas of theories because the questions that i have asked from every part of the topic and you were able to answer that i am so happy with that children continue doing this keep the same spirit with you uh, today i would like to just say a small quote don't change so people will like you be yourself and the right people will love you that is 100% right my children because if you try to impress others if you try to do something so that others become happy they are not the right people whom we want you be yourself don't change yourself for the sake of others try to give your best in whatever you do 100% sure that the right people will come and they will like you they will be with you forever that is for sure so i just want to tell you that whatever you do in your life you give your 100% in that be passionate be committed be dedicated to whatever you do 100% definitely right things will come to you children okay so believe in yourself definitely continue that throughout your life with this we are going to start our today's class in today's class we are going to start with phosphorus before getting into phosphorus i told you in last class we'll do a brown ring experiment of nitrogen so now we'll get back into the lab for seeing the brown ring test of nitrate ion children uh, as we have discussed in the last class we will now see how to detect the presence of nitrate ion using a ferrous sulfate and concentrated sulfuric acid see this is my ferrous sulfate powder and this i have diluted using water i have made a solution of ferrous sulfate in water okay now what i am going to do is i'll take this is aluminium nitrate so what i will do i'm going to take little of my nitrate in a fresh test tube so i'll fill my test tube with aluminium nitrate now what is given in the textbook to this nitrate solution we'll have to add freshly prepared ferrous sulfate so i will add now ferrous sulfate into it now what the color has now turned into little bit yellow you can see right now they have told add concentrated sulfuric acid along the sides and what you will get is a brown ring at the interface that is at the junction so let me slowly add concentrated sulfuric acid using my dropper now you can slowly see how the ring will be formed at the junction can you see children now see the ring is going to get thicker now we'll wait can you see children the ring getting formed at the junction here at the top and also here at both the layers the ring is formed so this is called as brown ring test this you will be doing also in the lab during your 
qualitative analysis that is salt analysis to find out the anion. So nitrate ion we were studying about p block elements in that the first element was nitrogen. So we now studied about the presence of nitrate ion using the lab test. Now we will get back into our class to learn more about phosphorus. So children I hope you saw the brown ring that is formed in the test tube at the junction that is at the interface right. So that confirms the presence of nitrate ion. Now we will get back into phosphorus. In 15th group element right below nitrogen we have phosphorus. Now phosphorus exists in allotropic forms. What do you mean by allotropy? The same element which exists in two three different physical forms that is the composition will be the same. Uh, maybe a small difference in that the element present in that form will be the same only their physical appearance will be differed. So that we call it as allotropes. So phosphorus actually exists in three trans translucent waxy solid. What is translucent? We know transparent is something that I can see through the other side but translucent is just like our cellophane or window pane glasses some ash shadow will be there but definitely I know there is something on the other side. So those are called as translucent. So these are translucent waxy solid they are highly poisonous they are insoluble in water I mean they do not get soluble dissolve in water but they are soluble in carbon disulfide right this is a solvent and it glows in the dark. It glows in the dark is because of the chemical reaction that is happening with white phosphorus giving out light that is they emit light with the process of chemical reaction in the dark atmosphere and that process we call it as chemiluminescence. Luminescence is nothing but light that is glowing. So this white phosphorus will be glowing in the dark and the white phosphorus when it is mixed with boiling sodium hydroxide solution in an inert atmosphere it releases phosphine it releases phosphine along with sodium hypophosphite and if you see this white phosphorus is actually less stable because of its less stability it is more reactive and this is the structure of white phosphorus it has an angular strain of 60 degree and this immediately burns in oxygen to give phosphorus pentoxide. So this is with white phosphorus. Now if you come to red phosphorus you can prepare red phosphorus by heating white phosphorus at around 573 Kelvin. So when white phosphorus is heated at 573 Kelvin it gives red phosphorus which again when it is kept on heating at under pressure it will be also giving black phosphorus as gases. Now these red phosphorus is actually in the form of an iron grey solid that is it gives a luster means shiny way and it is odorless does not have any smell it is non poisonous when compared to white phosphorus it is insoluble both in water and carbon disulfide does not get mixed up with it is less reactive we saw white phosphorus is more reactive because of its less stability but this white phosphorus is more reactive when compared to red phosphorus but this does not glow in the dark. Red phosphorus do not glow in the dark and it has a polymeric structure of continuous chain of P4. So this is the way that we, we write red phosphorus. Now we will get back into black, phos black phosphorus. Black phosphorus exists in two forms one is alpha black phosphorus and beta black phosphorus. Now if you heat red phosphorus at around 803 Kelvin in a sealed tube you will be getting alpha black phosphorus which does not undergo oxidation in air means it does not burn in air. Beta phosphorus is obtained when white phosphorus is heated at 473 Kelvin under high pressure. It does not burn in air till 673 Kelvin but after when you increase the temperature it tries to burn in air or I would say it undergoes oxidation. Allotropes of Phosphorus Elemental phosphorus exists in several forms which exhibit remarkably different properties. These forms are called the allotropes of phosphorus. The common allotropes of phosphorus are white phosphorus, red phosphorus and 
black phosphorus. Let us learn about these three allotropic forms in detail. White phosphorus is also referred to as yellow phosphorus because it turns yellow when exposed to air. It is poisonous in nature. Click the tabs to learn more about the properties of white phosphorus. White phosphorus is a waxy, translucent white solid. White phosphorus consists of four phosphorus atoms placed in a tetrahedral arrangement. Each atom of phosphorus is bound to the other three atoms by a single bond with an angle of 60 degrees, making it an unstable structure. The tetrahedral structure of white phosphorus is made up of weak single bonds. When exposed, it reacts with air vigorously. This shows that white phosphorus is highly unstable. When white phosphorus is exposed to air, the chemical reaction between phosphorus and oxygen causes the phosphorus to emit light. Hence, white phosphorus glows in the dark. This property is called phosphorescence. When white phosphorus is placed in water, it reacts with the oxygen in water and can stay in water for a long period of time. Thus, white phosphorus is insoluble in water, but soluble in carbon disulfide. White phosphorus is very reactive. Due to this reactive nature, it ignites when exposed to oxygen. In an inert atmosphere, it dissolves in boiling sodium hydroxide solution to give phosphine. To avoid the explosion of white phosphorus in the presence of air or sunlight, it is stored in water. Due to the explosive nature of white phosphorus, it is widely used in military warfare in manufacturing fireworks, grenades and artillery rounds. Red phosphorus is formed by exposing white phosphorus to sunlight or by heating white phosphorus to a temperature above 573 Kelvin under pressure for several days. It is non-poisonous in nature. Click the tabs to learn more about the properties of red phosphorus. Red phosphorus has an iron-gray luster. However, its color can vary from orange to purple because of the slight variations in its chemical structure. Red phosphorus has a polymeric structure consisting of chains of tetrahedral phosphorus molecules linked together. Red phosphorus consists of a chain of P4 tetrahedrons. Due to this polymeric structure, it is more stable than white phosphorus. Red phosphorus does not exhibit phosphorescence. Red phosphorus is soluble neither in water nor in carbon disulfide. Red phosphorus is less reactive than white phosphorus. However, it may undergo a hazardous chemical reaction when in contact with organic materials or oxidants. For example, it reacts vigorously with bromine to produce phosphorus tribromide.
red phosphorus is generally kept in tightly sealed containers in a cool dry place away from other reactive substances simple friction is needed to ignite red phosphorus therefore it is generally used in the manufacture of math sticks it is also used in the manufacture of fertilizers pesticides and drugs black phosphorus generally exists in two forms namely alpha phosphorus and beta phosphorus when red phosphorus and white phosphorus are heated alpha phosphorus and beta phosphorus are obtained respectively click the tabs to learn more black phosphorus has a metallic luster it is a crystalline solid with a greasy touch black phosphorus has an orthorhombic structure in which each phosphorus atom forms a bond with the other three atoms black phosphorus does not exhibit phosphorescence black phosphorus is soluble in carbon disulfide among all the allotropes of phosphorus black phosphorus is the least reactive and does not ignite in air black phosphorus is kept in sealed containers black phosphorus has no significant commercial use now let's summarize the trends observed in the properties of the allotropes of phosphorus allotropic forms of phosphorus allotropy is the property of some chemical elements to exist in two or more different forms phosphorus exists in three different allotropes white red and black white phosphorus white phosphorus is a translucent waxy solid it quickly becomes yellow when exposed to light therefore it is called yellow phosphorus it has a tetrahedral structure in the presence of oxygen it emits a greenish glow in the dark this phenomenon is known as phosphorescence it is highly flammable in air and slightly soluble in water hence it is stored under water red phosphorus when white phosphorus is exposed to sunlight or heated it turns into red phosphorus this form is more stable than white phosphorus but quickly converts to the white form when slightly heated due to this property red phosphorus is used in safety matches the relative stability of the red phosphorus is due to its polymeric structure consisting of long chains of p4 molecules black phosphorus black phosphorus is the most stable and least reactive allotrope it has a orthorhombic structure where rings of six atoms are interlinked black phosphorus is flaky and a good conductor of electricity summary phosphorus exists in three major allotropic forms white phosphorus is the most reactive and toxic form red phosphorus is used in safety matches black phosphorus is the least reactive form now we will study about phosphine now phosphine we studied that when white phosphorus is dissolved in boiling sodium hydroxide you get phosphine which has been released or produced now it is also prepared by treating 
CA3P2 hydrolyzing with water or treating with HCl. So in both the steps you get phosphine as your product. In the first one you get calcium hydroxide along with phosphine. In the second step you get calcium chloride along with phosphine. So these are the two methods. The next method is by white phosphorus treatment with sodium hydroxide. Now this is actually non-inflammable but you can make it inflammable because of the presence of P2H4 and P4 vapors. When these impurities are present it becomes inflammable. So to purify that what do we do is we treat this phosphine with hydrogen iodide so that you get PH4I which on treatment with potassium hydroxide you get pure phosphine that is phosphine gas liberated out without the vapors of P4 and P2H4. So now I think you understood preparation of phosphine is very important children. So you can write any preparation out of the three methods. Now we will learn about the properties of phosphine. Properties of phosphine. Now it's a colorless gas means you will not be able to witness the color. It's a colorless gas. It has a rotten fish odor and it is highly poisonous. It explodes with oxidizing agents like nitric acid and also with chlorine and bromine vapors. Explodes means it bursts out immediately. It is slightly soluble in water that is why solution of phosphine will be decomposed to give red phosphorus and hydrogen. That is why this phosphine when it is dissolved in water it undergoes decomposition giving red phosphorus and hydrogen. Now this when treated with copper sulphate what happens it gives a corresponding phosphides. Phosphine when treated with the salts it immediately metal salts it gives the corresponding phosphides. It is just basic like ammonia but compared to ammonia little bit weakly basic. So reacts with acid to form phosphonium bromide. So this phosphine can react with acids to form the corresponding bromide phosphate bromide. So these are some of the properties of phosphine. Now we will get back into phosphorus trichloride and phosphorus pentachloride that is phosphorus halides. We are going to study about phosphorus halides. Phosphorus halides as we have discussed before it reacts with halogens to form trihalides or pentahalides. If you see first trihalides phosphorus trihalides white phosphorus when it is passed over chlorine gas you get PCl3 that is phosphorus trichloride. Also the next preparation where white phosphorus when treated with thionyl chloride you get again PCl3 plus SO2 plus S2Cl2. So any two preparations I mean any one preparation you can learn by heart. And if you come to the properties the structure of PCl3 is sp3 hybridized and uh, you can see it has got a pyramidal shape with two lone pair of I mean a lone pair of electrons that is two electrons are there. Right. This is a colorless oily liquid and it gets dissolved in water and gives out fumes of phosphoric acid that is it mixes it with water absorbs the moisture and you, you will get the fumes that is phosphoric acid. So what, what happens here is PCl3 when treated with water you get H3PO3 and HCl this is an important question for your board exam. And if you also see it reacts with lot many organic compounds which we have learnt in plus one for the preparation of acid chloride that is acetic acid when treated with PCl3 you get acid chloride and again H3PO3 released as a byproduct. So if you see PCl3 has got some applications just like any other compound and structure is sp3 hybridized. Now we will learn about PCl5 that is phosphorus penta chloride. We will learn about PCl5 phosphorus penta chloride. Now phosphorus penta chloride can be prepared by heating white phosphorus passing over chlorine gas where you get PCl5 as your major product. It can also be prepared by treating it with thionyl chloride where you get PCl5 with sulfur dioxide gas released. Now if you see the properties as compared to PCl3, it is yellowish white powder because that was a liquid and this moist in air. That is when you treat with water it forms PCl3 which again gets hydrolyzed in water to form H3PO4. This is a very important reaction. Okay, so you should be learning it thoroughly. 
and PCL5 when it has been heated under pressure you get PCL3 also form which means phosphorus trichloride can be prepared from phosphorus pentachloride and just like our PCL3 it can be treated with organic compounds to form the corresponding halides and here it reacts with metal to form metal halides so when treated with silver you get silver halide when you treat with gold or copper you get the corresponding halides structure there we were saying it was a trigonal planar structure here it is trigonal pyramidal structure there it was actually pyramidal because you had a lone pair of electrons on the top but here it is trigonal by pyramidal because these three chlorine are equatorial bonds that is they are equivalent there are three pcl equal equatorial bonds and these pcl one at the top and one at the bottom are called as axial bonds and if you see the repulsion these axial bonds are actually having the maximum repulsion that's why one is placed above the plane one is placed below the plane at the top two extremes so that's why axial bonds they experience more repulsion when compared to the 3 PCL equatorial bonds. This is the state or this is the structure of PCL5 when it is in the gaseous or liquid state. But when it is in the solid state, it is in the form of an ionic solid. That is it exhibits cation and anion character with cation showing a tetrahedral structure and anion showing an octahedral structure with PCL4 plus tetrahedral and PCL6 minus octahedral. So, this is with respect to our phosphorus halides. Next you have oxo acids of phosphorus. There again there is a table given to you in the textbook children. Oxo acids of phosphorus and the structure. You should be learning the structure thoroughly. We'll be just, I'll be just going through the bonds formed by the oxo acids of phosphorus. Seeing about the oxo acids. In an oxo acid structure if you see each phosphorus is tetrahedrally surrounded by the other atoms. In that if you see in common there will be one P double bond O and one POH bond available in that structure. Now apart from this the oxo acids where the phosphorus is having a lower oxidation state there will be either a PP single bond or PH single bond but not both the bonds together. So, the oxo acids of phosphorus where there is an oxidation state of plus 3 will undergo disproportionation. You know what is disproportionation? That is if a lower oxidation state is there that will get changed into a higher oxidation state or it can also give a much lesser oxidation state compounds. So, for example, H3PO3 is an oxo acid of phosphorus where phosphorus is in plus 3 oxidation state will be giving H3PO4 with phosphorus having plus 5 oxidation state. So, this is possible only with oxo acids of phosphorus. And these acids where there is a pH bond in the structure, those will be acting as good reducing agents, mean they have a strong reducing character. An example is they reduce the metallic compounds to the corresponding metals like silver nitrate when it is treated with hypophosphorus acid where the pH bond is available and it is a good reducing agent it will reduce silver nitrate to silver metal. So from this what do you understand is a structure of oxo acid where there is a pH bond is present it is a strong reducing agent and it is non ionizable it does not give H plus ion. But where there is a POH bond, it is definitely ionizable and that will cause the basicity of the compound. So, if there is 1 OH, it is monobasic, 2 OH, dibasic, 3 OH, it becomes tribasic. So, these are with the oxo acids of phosphorus. Structure of oxo acids of phosphorus. Oxo acids are acids that contain oxygen. In such acids, acidic hydrogen is part of a hydroxyl group bound to an atom which is bound to an oxo group. Look at these everyday examples. All these items contain an important oxo acid of phosphorus. Can you name it? 
it is phosphoric acid. Let us learn about some important oxoacids of phosphorus. Click each tab to know more. Hypophosphorus acid is a monobasic acid with an oxidation state of plus 1. Let us understand the structure of hypophosphorus acid. In the excited state, phosphorus needs 5 electrons to become stable. Phosphorus obtains these electrons by forming a double covalent bond with one oxygen atom and three single covalent bonds with two hydrogen atoms and one hydroxyl atom. Observe the Lewis structure of hypophosphorus acid. Phosphorus shares two electrons with oxygen, thereby forming a double covalent bond. The phosphorus atom shares one pair of electrons each with the two hydrogen atoms and one hydroxyl atom to form single covalent bonds. Thus, in hypophosphorus acid, the phosphorus atom forms five bonds, one POH bond, two PH bonds and one PO double bond. Orthophosphorus acid is a dibasic acid with an oxidation state of plus 3. Let us understand the structure of orthophosphorus acid. In the excited state, phosphorus needs 5 electrons to become stable. Phosphorus obtains these 5 electrons by forming one double covalent bond with oxygen and three single covalent bonds with two hydroxyl atoms and one hydrogen atom. Let us now understand how the bond formation takes place. Observe the Lewis structure of orthophosphorus acid. Phosphorus shares two electrons with oxygen, thereby forming a double covalent bond. The phosphorus atom shares one pair of electrons each with the two hydroxyl atoms and one hydrogen atom to form single covalent bonds. Thus, in orthophosphorus acid, the phosphorus atom forms five bonds, two POH bonds, one PH bond and one PO double bond. Orthophosphoric acid is a tribasic acid with an oxidation state of plus 5. Let us understand the structure of orthophosphoric acid. In the excited state, phosphorus needs 5 electrons to become stable. Phosphorus obtains these 5 electrons by forming one double covalent bond with oxygen and three single covalent bonds with three hydroxyl atoms. Let us now understand how the bond formation takes place. Observe the Lewis structure of orthophosphoric acid. The phosphorus atom shares two electrons with the oxygen atom, thereby forming a double covalent bond. The phosphorus atom shares one pair of electrons each with the three hydroxyl atoms. Thus, in orthophosphoric acid, the phosphorus atom forms five bonds, three POH bonds and one PO double bond. Pyrophosphoric acid is a tetrabasic acid with an oxidation state of plus five. Let us understand the structure of pyrophosphoric acid. In pyrophosphoric acid, two phosphorus atoms are present. In the excited state, each phosphorus atom needs five electrons to become stable. Each phosphorus atom obtains these electrons by forming a double covalent bond with one oxygen atom, a single covalent bond with two hydroxyl atoms and a single covalent bond with one oxygen atom. Let us see how the bond formation takes place. Observe the Lewis structure of pyrophosphoric acid. 
consider two molecules of orthophosphoric acid. If a water molecule is removed from a pair of orthophosphoric acid molecules, a bond forms between the lone electron of the phosphorus atom of one molecule and the oxygen atom of the other molecule. In pyrophosphoric acid, the two phosphorus atoms form four pOH bonds, two pO double covalent bonds and one single pOP bond. Before getting started with the structures of cyclometaphosphoric acid and polymetaphosphoric acid, let us learn about metaphosphoric acid, which is an unstable acid. In the excited state, phosphorus needs five electrons to become stable. Phosphorus atom obtains four electrons by forming a double covalent bond with one oxygen atom, a single covalent bond with one hydroxyl atom and a single covalent bond with one oxygen atom. However, phosphorus needs five electrons to become stable. In metaphosphoric acid, it shares only four. What happens to the balance electron? To understand the bond formation in metaphosphoric acid, let us observe the Lewis structure of metaphosphoric acid. Phosphorus shares two electrons with one oxygen atom, thereby forming a double covalent bond. The phosphorus atom shares one electron each with the hydroxyl atom and oxygen atom, thereby forming single covalent bonds. We can observe that two lone electrons are left in the molecule. One belongs to the phosphorus atom and the other to the oxygen atom. Due to the presence of these lone electrons, metaphosphoric acid is unstable. To attain stability, different metaphosphoric atoms combine differently to form polymetaphosphoric acid and cyclotrimetaphosphoric acid. For example, by the addition or the removal of water molecules or oxygen atoms from one oxoacid, another oxoacid can be obtained. When one water molecule is removed from orthophosphoric acid, metaphosphoric acid is formed. Similarly, when one water molecule is removed from a pair of two orthophosphoric acid molecules, pyrophosphoric acid is formed. Also, when one oxygen atom is removed from phosphorus acid, hypophosphorous acid is formed. Let us summarize what we have learned in this module about the oxo acids of phosphorus. With this, we'll stop the class for today. Uh, next class, we will learn more about the other compounds of 16 to group elements. I'll be posting some videos with reference to today's class. If you have any doubt, please let me know. Uh, stay home, stay safe. See you in the next class children. Take care. Bye.